Hey everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to talk about the Pi Network. This is another cryptocurrency project that claims to allow users to mine using their smartphones and without draining their battery life. So if you're interested to find out more, stick around. So a little bit about Pi Network. It claims to be the first cryptocurrency project to allow users to mine using their smartphone. Their aims are to create a secure, immutable, non-counterfeitable uh, source of digital money. Now they're going to do this by using distributed ledger technology and making use of the Stellar Consensus Protocol. Another claim that they hold is that mining cryptocurrency on your mobile phone will not affect your battery life. The project was founded by three individuals, two of which hold PhDs from Stanford. The first being Nicholas, and then followed by Chendio, and the third of which is Vincent, who if you are familiar with the social media profiles, you will recognize as he seems to be the face of the project. I'm really gonna focus on the mining and how all of this sort of works. The mining for Pi Network is done on a four tier basis. The first of which is a pioneer. This is somebody who uses the mobile app to interact with the network on a daily basis. They do this by signing into the mobile app to verify their identity and to request transactions so that can be send or receive pi over the pi network the second of which is a contributor this is somebody who adds other people to their network within pi and this information goes together to to create the shared trust graph that we will discuss very briefly later on the third of which is an ambassador this is somebody who recruits other individuals to come over and join pi network whether they are pioneers contributors or ambassadors themselves an ambassador and a referee will receive a 25% referral bonus for signing up to the network. The fourth is a node. This is somebody who is physically running a node on a desktop or laptop and will maintain the distributed ledger. It is possible to be all four of these tiers of mining and receive contributions based on all four of them. Some of the key differences between Pi Network and other blockchain projects is the fact that rewards are paid out daily. They are not paid out per block. They are also spread across the entire network. So as long as you interact with the network in some shape or form, you will receive a payout at the end of the day. It also, in the white paper, discusses the availability of free transactions depending on network congestion. So once the network becomes heavily congested, then miners will be able to sort through transactions based on a fee system, with the higher fees being dealt with first and everybody else having to wait based on the amount of fees they want to pay. These mining fees will be sent to a separate wallet, which will then be distributed with the rest of the mining rewards at the end of the day. So now we can talk about the economics behind the token and the economic model of the project. The first thing to point out is that at present, there is no fixed supply and the total supply is unknown. This is because the total supply will be worked out once the project officially launches because at present the mobile app and the tokens that people are earning is actually acting as a faucet um, and is just a visual representation of the tokens that will be created in the Genesis block when the mainnet launches. So here we have the total supply equals M plus R plus D. M being the mining rewards, R being the referral rewards and the D being the developer rewards. So the first thing to discuss are the mining rewards and it basically works out to the fact that there is a fixed supply for each individual user of the network that will be created up to the first 100 million network users. R or the referral supply is 50% which is created at the same time as the mining rewards which will then be broken down to 25% for the referrer and the referee. These will be distributed at the same time as the mining rewards at the end of each network day. D or the developer rewards works out to be 25% of both the mining rewards and the referral rewards combined. In the white paper it does describe F which was used in the equation as a declining function. This, from what I understand of reading the white paper, is considered to be a declining function due to the fact that the supply will be capped to the first 100 million users. We also have the Pi stack, and these are potential use cases for the Pi network. The first one is the distributed ledger and the shared trust graph. This is a map of nodes and contributors and pioneers across the network 
being rated on their contribution to the network, which is the amount of people they recruit, and also the behavior of the nodes. This shared trust graph will be used to connect users to the nearest well-behaved node on the network if they send and receive any pi. The second is the attention marketplace. This is being sold as a scarce social media and the example they use is an Instagram type format where users can post out to the entirety of the Pi network and only one post will go out at a time. And you can buy this post by staking or spending your Pi in return for the attention of the Pi network. There is also the advertising marketplace. This is where you can opt in to selling your attention to advertisers in return for some pie. There's also the barter network. This is where users and individuals can sell services and products. We are skipping the shared data and connections because there's no explanation in the white paper as to what that is or what it consists of. After skipping that, we will then jump to the decentralized app store. This is going to be an app store similar to Google where developers can sell their decentralized apps without having to bootstrap to the network because all of this will be put in place by the Pi network, which seems like something that the majority of smart contract platform and projects that enable decentralized apps are already have in place. Okay, so let's discuss the governance of Pi network. So under 5 million users, they intend to have a similar off-chain kind of governance to that of Ethereum and Bitcoin. The main difference being that Pi Network is going to be a closed source project. So whereas with Bitcoin and Ethereum, users can actually add or put forward code and improvements to the network for people to agree on. Them. This is not going to be the case for Pi Network. Um, the developers will be asking for community input but they will not be able to implement any kind of change to the code in the same way as users can for Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example. After 5 million users, a committee will be created based on users' contributions to the network. This will be obviously users running a node and that are ranked highly on the shared trust graph which we know is constituted on behavior of nodes, but also on recruitment of other users. The committee will be trusted with the control of the network, deciding on where the network goes and how the network will be run. But also they will allow users to have at least some say on the direction of the network via using the mobile app. And now we have the roadmap. Well, the roadmap consists of absolutely no dates. It's just a generalized description of what the team want to do at some point in the future. We're currently sitting in phase one, which is the design development and the trust graph bootstrap. This is where the network is trying to recruit users and increase mobile app downloads and build a foundation for the network when the main net does launch. We do have the test net, which is actually running alongside the phase one. So anybody running a node at present would actually be running a node on the test net and helping towards the test net's success. The main net will be launched when the community decides the project is ready. So we have no date of a potential release just when it's decided on by the community that it's, it's time for the project to launch. Now, obviously, all of this information that I've put forward to you guys is my own research. I do try my very best to be unbiased and give you just the fact. But if you disagree, that is obviously your opinion. I expect everybody watching this, if you are going to invest in Pi Network, to go out there and do your own research. That's it for me. Take care. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful and you would love other exciting videos on tech, growing your business and making more money online, kindly subscribe to our channel at Breed School and click the bell notification icon to stay updated on other upcoming videos we create. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Breed School or visit us at breedschool.com. Have a great time and keep soaring. Bye.